Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, lesson. Um, I was thinking about the discourse uh, between the GMS Virginia camp and Vocab Malone. All right. Um, and there was a point, you know, where many things said and talked about, which many of those points Vocab came with, he he's come with before. But um, there was a point where the uh, brother Arad was um, bringing up the atrocities that happened to our people. All right. And um, Vocab Malone agreed that those things happened to our people, but he basically just tossed it to the side you know, basically, we need to get over it. We're in our feelings. All right. Um, and that's that, you know, when the Holy Scriptures, all right, tells you that the Israelites would have the mindset of calling into remembrance the things that have happened unto their forefathers, all right, and prophesying against the powers that be, okay, of the Heavenly Father sending His only begotten Son back, okay, to pay them back. Or as a matter of fact, we have here in the book of Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, in the uh, sixth verse, it says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay? And prophetically, okay, there has been many nations that troubled the Israelites, all right, but none like the biblical Edomites. Now, what Christians like to do is take nations out of the Bible at the time of Noah, all right, what came from him having three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, was eventually 18 nations. Out of those 18 nations, the Heavenly Father chose one, all right, and um, you can go into various histories of that particular nation being, you know, put in captivity, but the Heavenly Father paying back those nations for what they've done to those people. Egypt is a great example of that. Okay. Pretty much our message is in line with what Moses was speaking in Egypt. You see, but they want to make us crazy or some sort of raced, crazed, you know, monsters for bringing up the fact that a particular race did these things to our forefathers. All right. And they're reaping the benefits of what their forefathers did to our forefathers, man. So we're here to let you know it is a righteous thing, all right? The scriptures right here say it is a righteous thing. Don't allow these Christians to make you feel as if you're crazy, all right? You're damn right we're in our feelings about what happened to our forefathers and the position we're in. You're damn right we're in our feelings that the name of Yahweh by Hashem Shai aren't being uplifted in the earth and that, you know, this wicked, decrepit vibration has overcome the earth, all right? Because the earth belongs to the Israelites, all right, it tells you that in the book, let's get that in the book of, uh, I believe, a second address, the sixth chapter, and no matter how much you try to save heathen or Edomites, it's not going to happen, their, their, their fate is already sealed in prophecy, okay, a conversation between Paul and Agrippa, who's an Edomite, <laughs> would never change the fate of the Edomites, seeing that Paul himself says he agrees all right with everything that's written in the law and in the prophets so if he agrees with everything that's written in the law and the prophets he agrees with Obadiah he agrees with Ezekiel he agrees with Isaiah he agrees with all of the prophets that seal the fate of you Edomites okay uh, 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 in the book of Lamentations okay but um real quick let's get this this is the book of second Edris chapter 6 And I start at 54, it says, And after these, Adam also, whom thou hast made Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Okay, all nations stem from Adam because it was his descendant Noah who survived the flood and had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right, and with each particular nation, the Lord put particular spirits on them that determined their fate and what they would do in the future, which is ultimately prophecy. Okay. It says, 
of him come we all and the people whom thou hast chosen. And all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou hast madest the world for our sakes. See, the world was made for our sakes. So as we're arising in these latter days, we're calling out the powers that be for how the earth is being operated, treated, and for the things they did to the holy people. All right, the Bible even calls you out for what you've done to the heathen nations. Okay, but we, we in particular focus on what happened to our nation. Now, synonymously, we also bring out that those things happen unto us because of our disobedience. But that does not take away from the fact that there is going to be a payback for those particular things your forefathers did. And it's going to fall into the bosoms of their children, which you're here. All right. To reap the reproach, as the scriptures say, the children are going to complain of an ungodly father. OK, and right now the elites of this world are in preparation to go even further in their power. All right. To heap everything, including human beings into themselves, including the souls inside of those human beings. OK, with this whole uh, agenda. All right. And they're getting ready to lose their mind and go harder. OK, the time is short. So it says all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou hast made us the world for our sake. And as for the other people which come also from Adam, thou hast said they are nothing, all right, but like unto a spittle. Now, Paul says he agrees with everything that's written in the law and the prophets. Okay, see, what these Christians want you to believe is that the Heavenly Father, okay, replaced the promise to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, removed, all right, them out of the way, all right, and replaced it. That's where you get this thing, replacement theology, with um, actual heathen. And now the biblical nationalities no longer matter. You know, everybody's just white, black, red, yellow. There's no such thing as a, a, an Edomite anymore. There's no such thing as a Moabite, a Japhite, a Hamite. None of these things exist, which is ultimately they're, they're, they're pushing the pseudoscience that these Edomites <laughs> have pushed throughout the four corners of the earth over the narrative of the Bible, and they think, all right, as the scriptures say, they made a covenant with death, which is speaking of our people. But all of these Christians, they've made that covenant with death. All right, I was looking at the comment board and you had one of those guys say, you know, pretty much that in order to teach the Bible, you have to be educated. You see, they, they believe in the education they receive from these seminary schools. And the Bible says otherwise. The Bible says that the men of the Lord would be uh, 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 nothing in this world. Okay. The men of the Lord would have no letters. Yahweh Shai himself didn't go to any particular, uh, uh, college. The prophets were always looked at and the disciples as unlearned men. The base things of the world are going to confound the wise and that's what's happening. All right. So they're leaning on their pseudoscience. They're leaning on the narrative that has pretty much, you know, um, consumed the planet earth as a comfort, all right, to the, the reality of what's happening, okay, the, the other people that come from Adam, it says they are nothing but be like unto a spittle, and has likened them to an abundance of a drop that falleth from the vessel, and now, O Lord, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us, but we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, Thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. And that is for a punishment, right? But just like in Egypt, we were punished, but the Lord sent prophets to tell the people who punished us that they're going to pay for what they did. And that's the, 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 the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay. And that happened in various different captivities. And this one is no different. Okay. And everything that happened to us and everything that's happening in the world is Bible prophecy. We can go into the Holy Scriptures and show you how is that this is this is the book of life, but we can't link reality to it. See, they want to detach reality from the Bible and feed you this narrative that 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 doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up and Christianity isn't added up. And that's why they're trying to pester the Israelites and make us to seem as these dumb, unlearned monkeys, all right? But we're going to see how that plays out for you. No matter what narrative you run with, reality 
is happening all around you. Okay? It says, if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? And it's going to endure, according to the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, until the revival of the fourth beast and the Lord send his only begotten son, which we're in the revival of the fourth beast. It started at the Renaissance. It ends here in Babylon, the great, along with the NATO and the EU. And what would they do? According to Daniel, the seventh chapter, they will wear out the saints. OK, so going back here. OK, and, and, and that's 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 scripture. Let's get it real quick. We brought it out the other day, but let's uh just tap into a real quick here in Daniel, the seventh chapter. OK. Let's see here. Yep, Daniel 7 and uh, 21, and this is speaking of the final captivity of the Israelites, all right? It says, and I beheld in the same horn, all right, the revival of Rome made war with the saints and prevailed against them. You see that? And as I watched, this horn was waging war against God's holy people and defeated them, okay, until the ancient of days came. See, the Lord is going to send judgment for Ultimately, what's happening to the holy people and what's happening to the planet Earth, as the scriptures say, he's going to destroy them, which destroy the earth. So we're not crazy. All right. For promoting the narrative. All right. That the heavenly father is going to send judgment for what happened to us. OK, you didn't. You, the sinner is not going to escape with his spoils. And see, that's their thing. They, they, they want to promote us as these crazies. And that's all right. They want to promote us as just these brute, dumb, unlearned. OK, uh, uh, niggas that are just complaining about slavery in our feelings about slavery. Now we in it. Or we are in our feelings about what happened to us. All right. But synonymously, we're using that as a means to get ourselves together, repent. All right. Become better men. All right. Uh, 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 and the sisters become better women and get ourselves prepared for salvation. Now it says seeing Second Thessalonians one and six, seeing. It is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay. And it, it is a righteous thing for the most high to do that. And he showed that us that throughout all the generations, throughout every captivity the Israelites have been in, the Lord always showed forth, all right, judgment to those nations. And this one is no different. Okay. He took those nations down. Okay. Now he sent them nations on us, but then he also judged those nations for what they did. Now, that sounds crazy, but when you get the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, okay, let's get Romans, the ninth chapter. Yep, in verse 13, it says what? Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay, NLT, in the words of the scriptures, I have loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. Okay, but then this is Paul saying this, right? Now, that same Paul is going to try to save Agrippa, who's an Edomite, who I believe slept with his sister and did all manner of atrocities. Right before that council they had, he was going through uh, uh, particular regions doing evil. I believe he slept with his niece, Bernice, I believe her name was, but I can't remember exactly that history, but yeah, all right? So... No Edomite's going to be saved. Paul knows that. But the scriptures say what? A man uh, 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 that is in the spirit, a man that uh, pleaseth the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. Okay, so when you're in a crazy situation to where you're hemmed up by the police, that's not the time for you to lose your damn mind. The scriptures tell you to agree with your adversary. He applied wisdom. But that doesn't mean though that Edomite can be saved. Hell, we've been tied up with the with Edomite cops, okay, and used wisdom and used charm and got out of the situation. That don't mean we're saying that they can be delivered, okay? Anyway, Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. And see, they want you to believe it's unrighteous with the Most High to hate Esau, Okay, this is the most high script. 
For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have, com com have compassion. Okay? And it's interesting, he goes right from Esau to, he's going to jump to Pharaoh. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but whom God showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. See? Even for the purpose of putting down the Lord's people, okay, has he raised you up so that he can show his power. See? It says, for the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even, real quick, even, said, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout the whole earth. And that's what happened. Okay. When they went into the wilderness, the different nations were like, look, we heard of what your God did unto the Egyptians. Therefore he hath mercy on whom he have mercy and whom he hardened it. He hardened. Okay. He hardened. See, let's read this in the NLT verse 18. So you see, God chooses to show mercy to some, and he chooses the heart and the hearts of others, so they refuse to listen. You see that? NLT. Well, then you might say, why does God blame people for not responding? Have they simply done what he makes them to do? No. Don't say that. Who are you being a mere human being to argue with God? Should the thing that was created say to one who created it, why has that made me thus? When a potter makes jars out of clay, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and the other to throw into the garbage? <laughs> and that's what's going to happen to the Edomites. They're going to get thrown into the garbage. You've built this great, glorious nation off of the backs of slavery, rape, rob, murder, pedophilia, evil, wickedness, child, you know, sacrifice, all of that. And, you, and you're going to be thrown into the garbage. In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and power, he is very patient with with those on whom his anger falls and who are destined for destruction. And he's allowed you to rule. <laughs> See that? He does this to make the riches of his glory shine brighter on those whom he vows mercy, who are prepared in advance to glory. Okay, so let's go back to second Thessalonians one and six. All right. So the, the, the story of Egypt could be linked to the Edomites. All right. Who would have us in captivity in a spiritual Egypt. Okay. That's why in the book of Joel in prophecy, which Paul agrees with all of the prophets and all of the, the disciples agree with prophecy. Yahweh agreed with prophecy. Okay, he, he quoted the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, but Vocab wants you to believe that he doesn't agree with the part where the strangers will, will serve us. This is Joel. And Joel 3 and 19. Edom shall be a desolation. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. Because they have shed innocent blood in their land. See that? They attack the people of Judah. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. Showing you this is speaking of the kingdom. And this fulfills what? Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Because Esau runs this modern day Babylon. So Egypt, which is the modern day Babylon, is going to be a desolation in Edom. It's going to be a desolate wilderness because they run this modern day Egypt. They are the modern day Pharaoh and the Lord has raised them up to put hell on us. But guess what? There's a there's a, a, a recompense coming for that. So let's go back here. Second Thessalonians one and six. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high. All right. To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing. And to them and to you who are troubled. All right, which is the elect, only the elect are really troubled. All right, now you do have even particulars of the two-thirds, they're troubled, but what are they doing? They're marching around, begging for the Edomites to accept them, begging for some money, begging for Esau to stop doing this and stop doing that, but they're not getting their selves together. All right, so they are troubled. They do see that something is wrong, but they can't put it together. The Lord hasn't opened them up into it, but the elect, we understand 
why we're in this position. We understand who we are. We understand who our enemy is. All right. By biblical nationality. See, that's what separates and see, that's what makes us dangerous. See, they're not going to the Black Panthers. They're not going to these other little offshoot groups who, you know, uh, talk about black sovereignty and all of that. Black supremacy. And how the hell are you going to be supremacist if you don't own nothing? Okay, to be supreme or a supremacist, you have to own everything and control the, re the, the, the uh, reality of others. Control the, the, you know, the, the quality of resources of others. Okay, we, we can't be supreme within the system of Edomite supremacy. That won't happen. We're not looking for no goddamn black supremacy. Okay, we're, we're looking for this place to be destroyed and a righteous government in the form of the throne of David to be set up. Okay, and we can go into the Holy Scriptures to show you that the Lord is down with that. Okay, so yeah, we are in our feelings about what happened, but we're in order about it. We're not going to try to take up our own vengeance. We're not going to go and try to take down the government. We're not here to fight anybody. We're here to ultimately speak into existence what is written by the prophets. Okay, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shah shall be revealed from heaven with his holy angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Okay, and none of you people uh, 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 care about the good news because the good news is synonymous with the throne of David being established, the Israelites being brought back into their righteous estate, ruling on earth in righteousness. Okay, and the law, statutes, and commandments being the, the end all be all, all right, of the, the, the planet earth. Okay, when have you heard a Christian say in the kingdom of heaven, uh, you won't be allowed to eat rats, roaches, uh, pigs, you won't be allowed to be a sodomite. That's the things we're talking about. The, the, the water's going to be clean. The air is going to be clean. Okay, why is that? Because the law, statutes, and commandments will be implemented in the planet earth. Okay, it tells you that in the book of Micah, the fourth chapter, that the law is going to go forth of Jerusalem. They're not talking about that. They're okay with the people who are in the Holy Land right now, okay, getting billions of dollars in aid. Okay? Let's see here. Okay? You can read the title, but they get they still get an aid. OK, there's billions of dollars of aid sent to these people for their military. There's billions. There's 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 millions and billions sent to them for what happened unto them. Yet nobody tells them to get over it. Now, these are the so-called survivors, right? Now, <laughs> look at the time, 1144 on that uh, article right there. Um, but but when 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 is anybody going to tell them that they're welfare babies? And what is anybody going to tell them that they're in their feelings about what happened to them and they need to get over it? Nobody tells them that. You see that? <laughs> but this is the hypocrisy we're dealing with. OK, as a matter of fact, the saints are patiently waiting for what to be. For recompense to come. All right. Revelation 13. 9 and 10. And this is only for those who have the spirit. Anybody without the spirit is going to hear this and say, oh, nigga, you crazy. You trying to put, add your twist to the Bible. Okay. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience. All right. In the faith of the saints. Okay. This is what we're patiently waiting on. Okay, and as we've been raised up in these latter days, we're boldly proclaiming. As a matter of fact, let's get Wisdom of Solomon 5. Okay, this is Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. In the first verse, it says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Now, when you get Job, the 21st chapter, Okay, this, this chapter is speaking of how the wicked let's see here let's 
how the wicked in their mindset. Okay. Job 21 and 7. Wherefore do the wicked live and become old? Yea, they are mighty in power. The Queen Elizabeth just passed away, right? So-called, all right? Because we know there's a lot of left-hand magic going on and evil. And, and they're, they're trying to do a lot, all right? But we don't even give a damn at the end of the day. What did she do for anybody over here, you niggas in America? Jake crying and sad. Anyway, wherefore do the wicked live? Become old, yea, and are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. There you go. They, 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 they're, they're winning. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. Okay? The, basically, they have their heart's desire. Now, when you read down, okay, verse 29, it says, Have ye not asked them that go by the way, and do you not know their tokens? The reward that's coming unto them, that the wicked is reserved unto the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth unto the day of wrath. See that? And that's that's the time we're coming into. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him for what he have done? Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him for what he have done? Okay, well, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man... Stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. All right. And made no account of their labors. You see that? They make no account of our labors. The brothers sitting there bringing up all of the, uh, in that video, the brothers, Arad is sitting up there bringing up all of the atrocities that happen to our people. And it's just accounted as nothing. It's just like, oh, well, get over it. Okay. We have to get over it. We should just shut up. Okay. And, we're angry and disgruntled uh, uh, blacks who are uh, using the Bible to somehow uh, 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 preach a message of hate. See, this is what we're up against. They made no account of our labors. They made no account of how it was our forefathers who built this damn place. It was our forefathers who America was stole from. It was our forefathers who originally dwelt in the land of Israel. That land was created for us. The earth was created for us. Okay? So the, 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 the righteous man is going to stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted them. So this is prophecy being fulfilled. Okay? And no matter how crazy they think we are and how they can misuse our words and, you know, take the fact that we're, you know, some of us are from the hood and different backgrounds and try to use the... You know, the whole black card and angry and aggressive and mad and mean and dumb, unlearned. It's not going to work. Okay? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear to the point that they're going to get on airplanes and fly all over the earth to follow you around to try to get you to convert back to Christianity. You see, they're not afraid of you Israelites when you're in a dumbed down state talking about God loves everybody and I love uh, a sweet Jesus. They don't care about that. OK, but when they see you get into a serious mindset, they have to change it. They have to ridicule it. They have to uh, make it to seem crazy. You see, but little Wayne ain't crazy. Uh, a baby ain't crazy. OK, and all of the rest of these rappers, these niggas ain't crazy. Beyonce, Jay, they, that's cool. OK, but you saying you're an Israelite, that's the last thing they want to hear. All right. But they have to hear it. And of course, they're going to ridicule it and come up against it. That's just a part of the uh, the process. OK, that's the condition of the battle. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. OK, and it starts with us receiving this wisdom because the wisdom of and knowledge and understanding of the scriptures is the beginning of the kingdom of heaven. So that's even strange unto them how we have went out here on these streets and highways and byways and just stood up stiffly, okay, stood stiffly for the name of the Lord, okay? So when they see this, all right, and when they see the actual salvation, they're going to be troubled with fear. They, they would never believe that we are the children of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit because... What's going to come from this message we have is the prophecies being fulfilled. 
okay? And they're going to be repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. And, 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 and when this NWO come down and when these the leaders of this world really show you who they are, which we've been telling you in prophecy, and when the Lord gives us power, y'all people are going to be saying within yourselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision. In a proverb and reproach, these are the people who we laughed at and mocked and scorned. These, are the, these were the base things of the world. Wow. We fools accounted his life madness. Go and look at the comment board of the video that Vocab loaded on his page with the Virginia brothers. It's just nothing but ridicule and mockery, reproach, laughter. You see? Because these Edomites and these Christians, they, they can't go to sleep unless they know that we're retarded, stupid, crazy, and bugged out. Because they, when they hear this message, they know if this is true, we're screwed. Okay? So they, they take the pseudoscience, they take the narratives they've been taught in these seminary schools, and they want to push them forward. But that's the covering cast that has been placed above every, everybody's eyes and is being lifted. See, that covering cast is being lifted because the truth is coming out. There's no such thing as a black person. There's no such thing as a white person. There's no such thing as a Mexican. There's no such thing as a Chinese. Okay? Those are lies. All right? See, here it is. You got one group of people saying that they're the Jews, but then everybody else is just this off crazy nationality. No, it doesn't work like that. The, the real Jews are here, and all of the other heathen nations are here. Everything is based upon ethnos, ethnicity. And when it's all said and done, the truth <laughs> will prevail. And it is prevailing. Okay? We fools accounted his life madness. They, they say it's mad. Why are you wasting your life? Go rap. Go get a job, which we have jobs. Okay? Why are they wasting their time going out on the street corners doing this? Well, it's, it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that this is all being done. How was he numbered amongst the children of God and his lot? amongst the saints see this is going to be the end game <laughs> how in the hell are these the people of the most high how are these people these crazy disgruntled they would you they was cussing right therefore have we erred from the way of the truth and the light of righteousness have not shined upon us and the sun of righteousness have not rose upon they're going to find out all right let's get it because i keep quoting it the covering cast okay Isaiah 25 and 7, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations, which is the lies, okay, the, de the death that Esau had, the, the grip he has over the earth, the grip he has over people's minds. When people think of nations and nationalities, they actually think colors. That is a lie, they really believe that the 17 nations that the Heavenly Father created, they're no longer here and they've been replaced with all of these Roman ideologies. Because that's what ultimately, the, when, when you look at all of the pseudoscience that's being brought, brought into play and that rules and governs the mind of people, it came from these, ultimately from the Renaissance period. When the Renaissance period came in, that's when they were able to just spread their lies, pseudoscience, and continue being demons. Which that's talked about in the Holy Scriptures. As a matter of fact, let's get Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation 20 and 7. And when a thousand years are expired after the Renaissance period, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay. Now, is this speaking of the spiritual demon Satan? No. Again, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter tells us, okay. The man of sin is going to be revealed in the latter days. He wouldn't be able to hide himself. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So Satan being loosed out of his prison is those Edomites coming out of those caves and ultimately having a renaissance, a rebirth, a rebirth of what? Rome. And that's what secretly rules this world. Rome. Now it's out in the open, but it's like a mystery. The mystery of iniquity. Okay? So, 
when the thousand years were expired, what did he do? Satan went out, the children of Satan, to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. And it's going to lead to Gog and Magog gathering all of these nations for war, which is happening right now, whom is as the sand of the sea. Then they're going to come after the Israelites and be destroyed and devoured. This is where we are in prophecy. At the end of your BS, all of the, the deception that you spread throughout the four corners of the earth is being challenged, all right, by what? The base things of the world. Okay, let's get that in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Give me one second here. This is 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. <clears throat> One and twenty six, it says, For you see your calling, brethren, all right, how that not many wise men after the flesh, all right, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, all right. You know, certain brothers come from a, you know, a educated background, but the majority of us are just, you know, the rash. <laughs> You know, or rough around the edges, what people will call uneducated, right? But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Now, to you, it looks foolish, okay? And foolish means moros, impious, godless, foolish. That's how it looks to the world, okay? But when you go to the root word, it's mysterion. It's a mystery to you people, but it's hidden and given unto us hidden things, secret mystery, general mysteries, religious secrets confide only to the initiated and not the ordinary mortals. You see, the, the initiated have received this, these secrets and have boldly went out to the highways and the byways and doing these videos and proclaimed them. Okay, so everybody's laughing and mocking and talking crap. And that's what they did when our forefathers were rebuilding the tabernacle. Writing letters to the rulers, you know, they're doing, you know, and now they just have YouTube. Okay, hidden or secret thing, not obvious to the understanding, hidden purpose of counsel. So the Lord revealed his secrets to the servants, the prophets, who would ultimately be foolish in this world. But he used those to confound the wise, and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. All right. In the base things of the world, the things that are despised. Now, what's more despised in this world than the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American, especially the so-called Negro? See, and this is what they try to lean on, all that black, black, black. See, that gives them leverage to say it's, it's not worthy of being taken serious. See, but that doesn't even exist. There's no such thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. There's no such thing as a black person, period. These are all fallacies and lies that have ruled the minds of people for ages. See, no, we're the Israelites and your people, the Edomites, all right, are being called out, man, okay? And you're being confounded and made a fool of, man. So I just wanted to deal with that uh, and roll in the spirit, but I got to roll, so hopefully I'll edify. We'll be back with more, shall I?